Yes guys, how's it going? Welcome back to your Premier League predictions for game week 7. Those were my predictions up there for game week 6, which was a weekend completely taken over by VAR decisions, but I'm going to try really hard not to talk about them too much today. Uh, there were some crazy scorelines as well, 2-5-2 two, two results, uh, Manchester United beat Arsenal 3-1, Bournemouth beat Forest 3-2, and as always, you guys did better than me. Thank you to everyone who got their predictions down in the YouTube comments below. Be sure to do the same for game week 7. And well done to Geordie Among Locks, who got the golden cap in our online league. So be sure to go and check that as well. But as always, we will go through all of the games together. But first, we have a video sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. With so many classes available, you can look to learn a variety of skills. As I continue to try and improve my video editing skills, I took a class ran by Jordi Vanderput called Advanced Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro. It's software that I've been using for a while, but I'm still really trying to get the most out of it, and Geordie made the class really easy to follow. I'm quite often very busy doing this, that, or the other, so I find Skillshare really beneficial to be able to watch Geordie's video, whether it be full concentration or watching it in the background while I do something else. And because the video has subsections, it makes it really easy to either find the parts that you want to specifically learn about or just keep record of where you got up to in the video. And with thousands of classes, I know that I'll always be able to find the one that I need help with. And just for a bit of fun after this one, I'm hoping to maybe try something completely different. Uh, maybe even a language, as I say, to have it on in the background while I do something else. I'll report back on uh, what I decide to learn next. Skillshare have very kindly given me a link that I will put down in the description for the first 1,000 of you guys. To click the link, we'll get one month free. Uh, so be sure to go and check it out, take a look, let me know what skill you plan on learning, and doing so really helps the channel as well. Now then, let's kick things off on the Saturday, 12.30, we have got Fulham taking on Chelsea. So Fulham have had a decent start to the season, won two, drawn two, lost two, but they did lose against Spurs at the weekend. Uh, had chances, uh, Mitro did score again, but unfortunately worked out to be a consolation goal for them. But certainly gave it a good go, taking on a Chelsea side who did win their game 2-1 against West Ham. Uh, Chilwell comes on off the bench, scores a lovely goal, assists another for Kai Havertz who scores in the 88th minute to take the win. But uh, West Ham did have a goal ruled out, which uh, <laughs> I think is well recognised was a, a mistake by the VAR panel and Chelsea take the three points so no doubt they will be happy about that and I have backed them to win this game as well. I've gone 2-1 Chelsea. In fairness, Fulham at home with Mitro firing. I think he could well run Chelsea ragged but it could be a close one um, but I have backed Chelsea to win it. On to the three o'clock kickoffs now, starting with Bournemouth versus Brighton. Uh, both teams won their games at the weekend. Bournemouth were 2 0 down and won 3 2 against Nottingham Forest. Billing scored a wonder goal, Solanke scored an overhead kick, and it's crazy to think that not long ago they'd lost 9 0. They lost 9 0, they sacked the manager, they got a draw with Wolves, and then a big three points for them. At the weekend, taking on a Brighton side who were also losing in that game. We're losing 1-0 very quickly into the game. But they got it back to 2-1 just as quickly. Then it was 2-2 at half-time. And then Brighton came out with a 5-2 win in the end. McAllister scored possibly the best strike of a ball he'll ever score. Which got ruled out for another decision. But... He did score a free kick at the end and, as I say, made it 5-2. So, going into this one, two teams riding a high. Uh, Brighton currently sat in the Champions League spots. And I have back them. I've gone I've gone 3-1 Brighton. I'm hoping this one can be quite an exciting game. And I do not write Bournemouth off because they are showing they can score goals. But I had to pick one or I felt like I did. I, did, I don't think it's going to be a draw. Um, so, I've gone for the Brighton win. 
Now on to two teams who have not had a good start to the season. It is Leicester taking on Aston Villa. So Leicester are bottom of the Premier League with just one point. They have drawn one and lost five of their opening six games and are really not off to a good start at all. They were winning. They scored the first goal against Brighton. Ian Nacho got them underway and were just sloppy with the ball, giving it away. Madison gives it away. Brighton run through and score. I just don't know what's missing from this side. Uh, they got it back. They got it back to 2-2, and I thought, you know what? They have still got some good players on that pitch, but they just allowed Brighton to take over, and I, and I don't know what it is that Leicester need to, to turn things around. They may hope to get something at home against an Aston Villa side who have also not started the season very well. Uh, sitting in 17th place, have lost four, drawn one and won one. So they are one win better off than Leicester are and picked up a pretty good point at the weekend, drawing 1-1 against Manchester City and may have felt like they could have had a win because Coutinho scored an absolute banger that was uh, once again disallowed from the powers that be. But I think Aston Villa can still take some confidence from a good draw against a very good side into playing a Leicester side who aren't great either. Having said that, I have backed the draw, to be honest. I find this one quite tough to call and because neither team's been playing that great, I've sat on the fence a little bit and gone for a 1-1. Next up, we have got Liverpool taking on Wolves. So Liverpool drew 0-0 with Everton at the weekend. Uh, you've got to say, for their standards, haven't had a great start to the Premier League season. And Klopp has actually spoken in an interview after that game where he said he feels like they are underperforming in the Premier League. And they had so many shots. They hit the post, they hit the crossbar, uh, Nunes was back from suspension, but even he couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. And in fairness, um, Pickford for Everton had a great game, but Liverpool, I think, will feel like they should have taken more from that match. Taking on a Wolves side, who have got their first win of the season, but not only that, but their first Premier League win in... 12 games because they had such a poor end to last season but they've got the win Podence puts the ball in the back of the net just uh, I wonder if he'd actually hit it cleanly where it would have gone but he didn't and it bobbles around the goalie and they get three points um, so I think Wolves will have a bit of confidence from that game but I just think that things will click for Liverpool soon and the players they've got you just can't argue with. So I have backed them to win this one. Gone 2-0. As I say, goals has been a, str a struggle for Wolves and Jimenez, I, I believe, has picked up a groin strain now. So whether he'll be available for this game as well, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I've, I've had to back Liverpool. In the final three o'clock game, we have got Southampton taking on Brentford. So Southampton's season has been quite up and down. Uh, lost, drew, won, lost, won, lost, lost against Wolves at the weekend. As I say, the Podent goal is the only difference between two sides. Che Adams scored with his arm <laughs> that they they got disallowed. He almost heads it onto his own arm, um, so they will be disappointed with that. Um, I really like the look of that Arabo. Uh, the guy they got from Rangers looked really good, but wasn't enough to pick up a point for them last weekend, and they're taking on a Brentford side, who have looked good. Won 5-2 at the weekend, as I mentioned. Um, hat-trick hero, Ivan Tony scores a hat-trick, um, a penalty, a, a fantastic free kick, and then a beautiful dink when the Leeds keeper's gone a bit mad and he's now going to dink it over the keeper and two defenders to put it in. It wasn't It wasn't bad to look at. And because of that, because of the goals they've scored and because Southampton haven't had the most goals this season, I've backed Brentford to a narrow 1-0 uh, win. On to the 5.30 kickoff now. We have got Man City taking on Spurs. Two sides who have had a great start to the Premier League season and the only two sides still yet to lose in the Premier League. So, could we see one of these teams pick up their first loss of the season? As I mentioned, Man City drew 1-1 with Aston Villa. Um, Erling Haaland did score again. Uh, was unable to score more than one to, to make it a win, but looks good. 
And I think you fancy him scoring in every game. Uh, it's funny how last season someone like Salah would get captained by everyone in the fantasy league. I think Haaland's becoming that guy now because he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't always get that involved with the play, but. When the ball comes to him, you fancy him scoring every time. Uh, taking on a Spurs side who, as I mentioned, beat Fulham 2-1. Harry Kane scores and puts himself in third place of uh, all-time Premier League goal scorers. Still quite a few off Shearer, but who knows what he can do in the next few years. And Hoiberg gets the goal as well. I have to give a shout-out to Richarlison, who I thought played fantastically well in that Man City game. And in terms of a result, I'm hoping... For loads of goals. Uh, having said that, it'll it'll probably be one of them games that's nil-nil or one-nil. But that's not what I'm going for. I am back in the Man City win. But I thought defensively, they didn't look great at the weekend. Um, so I have gone 3-2 Man City. I cannot wait for that game. <laughs> I think I'm hoping it's going to be a good one and that it's not nil-nil. But we will wait and see. On to the Sunday now at 2 o'clock. We have got Arsenal taking on Everton. So Arsenal lost for the first time in the Premier League at the weekend against Manchester United. Uh, did give away a couple of goals that I think they will be disappointed in. Uh, Saka scored the goal for them, but as I say, conceding a few goals there. I mean, Martinelli had a goal ruled out that I think some Arsenal fans will be disappointed with. But generally, Arsenal had a lot of the ball. They created a lot, but Manchester United were just a little bit more ruthless in front of goal. But I think Arsenal will fancy their chances at home against an Everton side who are still yet to win this season. Uh, losing two, drawing four. Uh, having said that, I think they'll be pretty pleased with the nil-nil they got against Liverpool. Having said that, they had a few chances themselves, but ultimately um, it was people like Jordan Pickford who kept them in the game. Uh, Cody actually scored for Everton that got ruled out as well. So many goals getting ruled out at the weekend. Uh, I'm really hoping this isn't going to be the same for game week seven. But I have backed the Arsenal when I've gone 2-0. Um, who knows? Maybe Everton can put, can put a goal in. But just generally, I think Arsenal have been the better team so far this season. Next up, still at 2 o'clock on the Sunday, we have got West Ham taking on Newcastle. So I think the two teams who got the biggest injustice for VAR at the weekend. Hopefully, it does not need to come into play in this game. As I mentioned already, West Ham lost against Chelsea 2-1. Antonio scores from close range. Uh, they hit the post a couple of times. I know Fornells had that great, sh great looping shot that just went over and conceded in the 88th minute to lose 2-1, but obviously had their... Uh, Cornet goal disallowed. Uh, Rice comes out after the game and is, is very unhappy. David Moyes comes out after the game is very unhappy. And it's a loss. Taking on a Newcastle side who drew 0-0 with Crystal Palace. Um, to be honest, Willock got shoved by the defender who hit into the goalie, but the ball hit the defender and went in anyway. It should have been allowed, basically. Newcastle should have won that game, but VAR aside, Newcastle were... Good going forward, um, the Crystal Palace goalkeeper had a fantastic game and kept everything out except the goal that got disallowed. So it's a, I think it's going to be one of them. I think it could be a very close game. I think Isaac for Newcastle looked really good and was disappointed that he wasn't able to finish his through one goal shot. I mean, uh, Newcastle hit the post a couple of times themselves. So could this be a high scoring game or a low scoring? I have backed... A 1-0 Newcastle, Kieran Trippier free kick. But, um, as a Newcastle fan, I would say that a draw down at the London Stadium wouldn't be a bad result, um, especially considering that West Ham are playing some pretty decent football, but are not getting the results to show from it, and they're going to have to start getting them soon. So hopefully, it's not in this one. Still on the Sunday, but at 4.30, we have got Crystal Palace taking on Manchester United. So, as I mentioned, Crystal Palace drew 0-0 with Newcastle last weekend. And I do think they will be the happier of the two sides to have taken the point. Uh, Gaeta, the goalkeeper, had a fantastic game, kept everything out. And Crystal Palace had a few chances. 
but maybe not quite as much as they would have hoped. And now taking on the Manchester United side who have really turned their season around after losing the first two games have now won four Premier League games in a row. Anthony makes his debut and scores and Marcus Rashford is a new player now, isn't he? A goal and an assist for him in their win over Arsenal. And yeah, I mean, Rashford suddenly under Ten Hag is playing the way he did you know, a couple of years ago. Uh, and Ten Hag has made some big decisions. He's moved some players out. He's moved some players in. I believe he's moved some players out of the squad completely or out of the changing room, at least to really try and get that cohesiveness together in this squad. And I have backed the Manchester United win. I've gone for five Premier League games, five Premier League wins in a row. I've gone 2-1. I don't think Palace will make it easy for them. And at home, I think they could well get a goal. Um, but... I'm not going to, you know, go against the, the run of form at Manchester United at the moment. And to finish things off on the Monday night, we have got Leeds taking on Nottingham Forest. So Leeds uh, lost their game 5-2 at the weekend. They've won two, drawn two, lost two, and did get it back to, I think, 3-2 at one point and should have had a penalty themselves. Uh, the manager, March, came onto the pitch, had a go at the ref because of the pen that should have been given. His frustration took over and saw himself get a red card. So he won't be at the sideline for this game. Um, but generally, as I say, did get themselves back into the game. But ultimately lost it in the end. Taking on a Nottingham Forest side who um, lost to Bournemouth at the weekend. As I mentioned, were 2-0 up and lost 3-2. So I've no doubt they will be disappointed with that. Um... For a promoted side against another promoted side in Bournemouth. And Bournemouth being the favourite for many to go down after how much money Nottingham Forest have spent. I think they must have seen that as three points. And going into this one, I think it's two teams here who are pretty goals orientated. Uh, with Leeds, there's always goals. It was just unfortunate it was against them at the weekend. And a 3-2 for Nottingham Forest. I'm hoping to see a few in this one. Uh, and I have... Back the home side, I've gone Leeds 3-1. I think Nottingham Forest have got a good side. They just need to get that, you know, working together a little bit more. Whereas Leeds, I think, are, are just scoring for the fun as well. I know they conceded quite a few at the weekend as well. But, yeah, I've gone 3-1 Leeds on the Monday night. And that is it, guys. So those are my predictions up there for game week seven. Be sure to get your predictions down in the YouTube comments below or lodged in our online league. And... Be sure to go and check out our sponsor Skillshare. Uh, there's a free trial. The link will be down below and it really helps the channel if you take a look. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already and uh, have a great weekend. Hopefully there's no crazy VAR decisions in this one. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.